All right, today we're going to continue on with vectors and we're going to talk about the I, J, and K notation. Okay, but before we do that, we need to understand what a unit vector is. So a unit vector, so if I have a vector A, we indicate a unit vector with a little hat. I don't know what you call that thing forgotten but I call it hat I say a hat I think that's I think that's the technical way to say it a hat uh, I think that's how people say it. okay so uh, we've got vector a hat so that means it must have the unit vector must have a magnitude of one okay so if you Drawing A, A looks like this. Uh, so a unit vector in the direction of A, or we want to find A hat, we just take of unit length one in the same direction. So A hat might be that one. Okay. All right. So for the IJK notation, this is important because we have vector I. Now, vector i is a unit vector, so we just leave the hat off though. Um, so we just, by definition, know that vector i is a unit vector in the direction of the x-axis. Direction of x-axis. Yeah. J is a unit vector in the direction of y-axis y-axis, sorry, I should say. Don't know why I'm saying that with the plural. Um, unit vector k is in the direction, we know what that means, of z-axis. So this is in three dimensions, i, j, k. So if I draw that out, we've got, here we go, we've got... this way here we go this is my attempt at drawing in 3d okay so we've got our x-axis our y-axis oh, axis I keep saying that wrong and z straight up so here makes a plane and then we've got straight up and out of the page we've got um, not straight up and down the z-axis okay so the i is a unit vector this way, so this is i, unit vector that way, j, a unit vector, and up and down, we've got a unit vector k. Okay, so these are all magnitude 1 in that direction. Okay, um, let's keep going. Let's show you what a vector would look like in this i, j, and k notation. Basically, we say how, how much we go in the i direction, how much we go in the j direction, how much is going in the k direction, and we sum them all up. So let's have a look at that, what that would look like. Oh, I should have, should have tried to draw it on there, but that might be a bit difficult. Okay, so we could have a vector that looks like this. We could say OA is a vector, and it is comprised of these components. So uh, three in the I direction, plus four in the J direction, and one in the minus K direction, okay? So we're just multiplying them by the unit vector, adding them all up. This is really good because if we wanna to add to another vector, we could go, well, Let's not do that yet. Let's uh, come back to that. We will first find the magnitude of this vector. So this notation is really good for doing calculations with. So OA, to find the magnitude of this, we just use a bit of extended 3D Pythagoras theorem. And we take each of the components, three squared plus four squared plus one squared. 
Okay, the one from the K. And we get the square root nine plus 16 plus one, which is root 26, which is, uh, I think that's as best as we can, we can get that one. Okay, so now we've found the magnitude of this. Can we find a unit vector of OA? Can we find OA hat? Okay, so the unit vector in the direction of OA. Now we know that it has a length of root 26 OA. So if we scale it down so it has a, a magnitude of one, right? So we just scale down by dividing it by its magnitude, one on root 26 of three I plus four J minus K. So we just did a scalar multiplication here by one on its magnitude. So then it scales down. So this has a length of one, okay? But it's in the same direction as OA. So this is the unit vector of OA. Okay, let's keep going. What else do we need to be able to do that's useful? Okay, let's cross this out. Okay, let's say you've got two vectors, OA, uh, we're going to call this 3i plus 2j plus k, okay, and ob. So these are position vectors, 5i minus 4j uh, minus 5k, okay. All right, I'm just going to, even though these are in 3D, I'm just going to, represent them two-dimensionally because they're too hard to draw 3D. So just as an example, here's our origin O. We usually use O to represent where the origin is. And we'll put A over here and B over here. Let's put point B there. Okay. So our OA is this vector. Our OB is this vector. So what vector is AB? So how do I find this vector, A, B, okay? So the great thing about this notation is it's really easy to find. You just say, well, if I start at 3i and I've got to get to 5i, well, how much, what do I have to add to this to get to this? So I've got to add 2i. So A, B, I'll put A, B here. A, B equals 2i from two to negative four. I'll have to minus six to get that way, to get there. And from one to negative five, that's also minus six K. Okay. So AB is two I minus six J minus six K. Okay. How do we know if two vectors are parallel to each other? Okay. So if we have, let's change notation. So we get used to that. So we've got vector R. Uh, is i minus 2j plus lambda k. So I don't know what lambda is yet. And we've got half i minus j um, plus 3k. Okay, so what does lambda have to be for these to be parallel? Okay, so it looks like that R is double S, right? So I could write that out. I could write R, vector R is a scalar multiple of S. So it's two times whatever S is, okay? So uh, two times half, that's one. Two times negative one is negative two. So therefore two times three would have to be six. Therefore, Lambda must be six. Okay, so that one's pretty easy to work out. But if they're parallel, then they must be going the same direction. So they must be able to write as a scalar multiple. And that scalar could be anything. That could be, you know, three halves or pi, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, can I write one vector as a linear combination of two other vectors? Okay, so I'm going to write down three vectors. Let's have a look at what this does. Okay, let's have a equals 3i 
plus 4j minus k b can be 2i minus 3j plus k and c can be 6i plus 25j minus 7k. All right, so can I write, say, this vector c, you know, by scaling this one up or down, scaling this one up or down, and at, do I end up, add them up, and do I end up with c? So what I'm trying to say is can c be written um, let's use m vector a, so m times vector a, some scalar multiple of a, plus some scalar multiple of b, let's use n, yeah, and that, do I end up with c? If that's the case, then these vectors are linearly de uh, dependent. If I can't do that, then they're linearly independent. So I might have to show either, whether they're dependent or independent, okay? So I might do that over here. Hopefully you can see over here, Hopefully it should be all right. So how do we do that? Okay, so we look at this, we're gonna times uh, A by M, M A, so it'll be three M I plus four M J minus M K. Okay, and we're gonna times B by N, so two N I minus three N J plus N K. Okay, so I've got to make the three M I plus the two N J it's got to equal six, yeah? So I'm going to write six has to be equal to three M plus two N, okay? So three M plus two N has to equal six. And I'm going to do the same with the J's. I'm going to go, well, 25 has to equal four uh, M minus three N. And I'll do the same with the K's, I go, uh, negative seven has to equal, uh, well, let's do it around this way. Let's do N minus N, okay? So I've got, a, I've got three equations. I've only got two unknowns. So we just have to make sure if we use two of these equations to solve M and N, we've got to make sure it still works for this third equation because it's got to work for all three bits, okay? So, you know, let's go from, from equation three, we know that oh, we, can, we can go uh, n equals m minus seven, just rearranging this, moving this m over this side. And then we could sub that into equation one, that looks like a pretty easy one. So sub into one. So I'm using equation three and one at the moment. Um, Sub into one, I get six equals three m plus two times n, which is m minus seven. Okay, so let's expand and collect like terms. So that's my expanded, my like terms are six equals five m minus 14. So I get move the 14 across, I get 20 divided by five is four, so m equals four. So there's one possible solution. I can find my n now by subbing that back into this three. So I've got four minus seven, negative three. Now I've only used equation one and equation three to work that out. Does it work for equation two? Let's try. 25, does that equal four times M, which is four, minus three times minus three for N. So I get 16 plus nine equals 25. Good, as required. All right, that's it for this video.